everybody, it's Mark from Ripple Trading. So DaVinci Resolve 17 public beta is out and there is a lot to talk about. In this video, I'm gonna focus on the top features in the color page, so let's dive right in. The color page in DaVinci Resolve 17 has received multiple major new feature additions and improvements. In this video, I'll show you what I consider the top four. First, color management has had a complete overhaul in both the underlying color science and how you work with it. These changes improve grading quality, notably in roll-off and tone mapping, change how grading responds to control adjustments, and it's now easier to set up. In project settings, under color management, when you choose DaVinci YRGB Color Managed as your color science, you now have a new set of presets to choose from that automatically set the input and timeline color spaces and tone mapping. If you select the new DaVinci Wide Gamut preset, for example, you create a log grading space in which you can grade both SDR and HDR deliverables. Depending on your choice of output color space and type of media, your footage will be appropriately, and quite nicely, tone mapped to the selected target. This is a great environment if you're working with log or raw files. If you choose the custom preset, you then have full access to all the advanced settings. These include a new timeline color space called DaVinci WG Intermediate that has a very wide color gamut, even wider than ACES. For working with projects that have both HDR and SDR deliverables, and for future-proofing your work, you can use the input and output DRTs to choose the most appropriate tone mapping scheme to match your HDR and SDR material to the timeline color space. Notice the checkbox for color space aware tools. The curves palette, the qualifier palette, and the new HDR palette, which we'll discuss next, can now create consistent grades across different types of media with different source color spaces when this is checked. The new HDR palette is an incredibly powerful and completely customizable new grading tool that, contrary to its name, can be used with equal effect on SDR material. You open it by clicking the color wheel icon that says HDR, right next to the color wheel's palette icon. At first, the HDR palette may appear similar to the color wheel's palette since it has four color wheel controls, but instead of lift, gamma, gain, and offset, we have dark, shadow, light, and global controls. These three color wheels to the left of the global control are called zones. There are actually six zones by default. This here is a banking control that lets you choose which wheels are visible. Click the left and right arrows to bank over one wheel at a time, or click on a grayed out icon to bank directly to that wheel. The six default zones include black, dark, shadow, light, highlight, and specular. Notice how the global control remains as you bank to the left and right. If you click the Options button, the three dots here, you can choose to bank global with color wheels so that it is included as you bank left and right, allowing you to see four zones at a time. I'll turn that back off. Each zone affects a different and overlapping luminance range of a shot. To better understand what range will be impacted, let's open the zone graph by clicking the graph icon to the right of the HDR wheels icon. Along the left is a list of the current zones. The icon to the left of the zone name indicates the luminance direction the zone affects. For example, if I select the dark zone, the stem in the graph lights up, indicating the limit of the zone, and the red area indicates the direction and fall off of the zone's impact. So here, any adjustments to the dark zone will affect luminance levels from this vertical line to the left. If I select the light zone, changes here will affect luminance ranges starting from the vertical line and moving to the right. Notice how the shadow zone is to the right of the light zone, but it points to the left, so these two zones overlap in the area in between. The middle of the scale at zero is neutral or 18% gray. The histogram overlay makes it easy to see which zones will impact the image. For example, in this shot, the highlight zone currently will have very little impact, and the specular zone, none at all. This particular zone is more useful for HDR grading, and as you can see, I'm working in a Rec. 709 color space, so the image is limited to 100 nits of brightness. These zones, as I mentioned earlier, are completely customizable. Using the histogram as a guide, you can change the starting point of a zone by dragging the head of the stem, or dragging on the max range slider. You can change the direction of the zone's influence by clicking the icon next to the zone name. 
and you can adjust the falloff range by dragging the slider here. You can even create new zones and give them custom names. I'll cancel that. Once you've customized your zones for a particular clip or set of clips, you can then save your changes as a preset by clicking the Options button. So, you can create and store multiple custom presets that are tailored to your specific workflows. Let's switch back to the HDR wheels. It can be helpful to see both the HDR wheels and the zones at the same time. To do so, you can expand the palette by clicking this icon here. Much like the color wheels palette, a typical grading workflow might start with global adjustments, which here means using both the global color wheel and the tools along the bottom. I'll make an exposure and temperature adjustment here. Notice how the operator curve overlay in the zone palette reflects my changes. Then I'll adjust contrast. In Resolve 17, adjustments to contrast now have no perceptual impact on saturation, allowing you to expand or contract contrast around a selected pivot point without affecting saturation. I'd like to see more detail in the sand, but if I use the shadow exposure, it affects too much of the rest of the image. So I'll reset that and adjust exposure for the dark zone instead. Notice that I can adjust the range of the dark zone using this left wing slider and the fall off using the right wing slider to tweak the luminance range I want to impact without needing to do so in the zone palette. I'll also reduce saturation to pull any color cast out of the shadows. I'll bank to the black zone and bring down exposure a bit. And finally, I'll bank over to the highlight zone to tweak the exposure of the sun and its reflection. I haven't used the color wheel controls for this shot, but they work much as they do in the color wheels palette. Notice below how the X and Y coordinates update. If you prefer, you can use the Options menu to display the coordinates as Angle and Strength instead. In all my adjustments, I get a very nice smooth roll-off from one zone to the next, as reflected in the Operator Curve Overlay in the Zones palette. This is obviously a very simple example and just hints at the power of this new HDR palette. I suspect it will become the first primary grading tool of choice for many folks grading in Resolve. When it comes to secondary corrections, the next big new feature in the color page of Resolve 17 is the Color Warper palette, which you can open by clicking this spiderweb looking icon here. To make it larger, you can pop it out in a floating window by clicking here and then resizing as needed. You can think of the Color Warper as an adjustable mesh in a 3D color space cube represented in two dimensions. It works kind of like a qualifier in that you make selection ranges, but you can also then adjust those ranges in unique ways. You can work with either hue and saturation, or you can choose chroma and luma. I'll start with hue and saturation. You can choose the color space type down here. One way to use the color warper is to click drag directly on your shot. Clicking will select a point on the mesh, and dragging will adjust hue or saturation or both, depending on where you drag, using the graph as your guide. You can also drag the selected point on the mesh directly. Notice here I'm affecting more than the trees with my adjustment. I'll reset it. Down here, you can adjust the density of the mesh for more precise corrections. I'll select 12. Now my adjustment is restricted to a narrower band of hue and saturation, so I can more precisely target the green of the trees. I'll move that point back into place, but leave it selected. Another option is to turn on Auto Lock and then select a lock of one or up to 15 points away. Doing so in this case restricts the selected range saturation that you're affecting. I'll reset that. You can drag a marquee to select mesh points, use the Draw Selection tool to select specific points, and use the other tools to pin points, pull points together or push them apart, adjust the fall off of the selection, and much more. You can also use the Range tool to select a hue range to work with. And then either drag the points or use the Hue, Saturation, and Luma sliders to adjust each independently.
I'll add a node and switch to Chroma Luma. Here we have Chroma along the X axis and Luminance along the Y axis. So you'll use this tool to change the hue and luminance of a selected range, instead of hue and saturation. Here too, you can choose from different color space options. And just like the hue saturation graph, I can increase the mesh density. The waveform is similar to a histogram in that it shows the current luminance values of the shot, but here it is luminance across chroma ranges. You can use the axis angle to rotate this virtual color cube to find the best attack point for making a selection. I'll double click to reset it as the default orientation will work here where I'd like to lighten the darker skin tones. If I click drag up on the image, I'm increasing all luminance values of this selected hue, which I don't want to do. So instead I'll reset, select a point on the row above which I don't want to be affected, use this tool to select the entire row, and use this tool to pin the row. Now when I click drag up, I'm only affecting the luminance values of this hue with a smooth roll off up to the pinned luminance value. Once again, I'm just scratching the surface, but I hope you get a sense of how flexible and powerful the Color Warper palette can be. The last big feature I'll discuss today is the new and rightfully named Magic Masks palette, which you open by clicking this icon here. Driven by DaVinci Resolve's Neural Engine, it is essentially an auto rotoscoping tool that can identify and track people and specific features of people in a video clip upon which you can then perform secondary corrections. If you select features, for example, you can choose face, hair, arms or legs, top or bottom clothing, even shoes or a hat. But in this case, I want to select and track the entire person. I'll draw a short stroke to identify the person I want tracked. I can check my initial selection by clicking the Mask Overlay button. The selection is a little too large, so I'll change the quality level to better. Now, much like tracking a power window, I'll click the Play Forward button to track the person through the second half of the shot. Then I'll click here to jump to the first tracked point and track back to the start of the clip. Once tracked, if necessary, you can refine the selection with these tools here. I'll turn off the overlay and now I can grade the tracked person. Here I'll use the lighten zone of the HDR palette to make the waiter stand out more in the shot. You can also invert the selection by clicking here. I'll toggle the mask overlay so you can see now everything else is selected, and now you can grade everything but the tracked person. The Magic Mask palette is truly a great new addition to the color page. There are several more significant workflow improvements that we'll cover in upcoming videos. I hope this short introduction to some of the key new color page features gets you as excited as I am for Resolve 17. Let us know what you think by leaving a comment below. We have an in-depth tutorial on the new color page features in the works by our resident color grading expert Alexis Van Herkman that will be an absolute must watch for anyone who wants to improve their grading skills. So subscribe if you haven't already to get notified as soon as it's available. Hope you found this information useful. Leave a comment below and we'll see you soon.